Hello, now I'm live. Now I'm live with, uh, <laughs> I was live before too. Um, now I'm live now. with I'm you live. guys in the group. Feel free too. to uh, um, give I'm me your you guys. notes. Let me know in the comments that you're here. Um, I will say that I'm going to give it one second so that I can make sure that I've set up everything properly. But in the comments, just tell me you're here. That way I know you're um, joining me and let's do this thing. So today I've actually got a, a little bit of a slideshow. I figure I do so many lives in here that you guys just don't, you don't need to see my face again. So let's see if I can make this all work. Um, give me one second because I'm going to do a screen share on this one. All right. So. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I actually right this second cannot see your comments because I am uh, working on this myself behind the screen. So if you have comments, if you have questions, just leave them because we are going to be doing a, um, a Q&A at the end. So I will answer any questions that you might have. All right. And I might just hop back and forth between the screen just a second. So here we go. Let's see if I can get this working properly. All right. First thing I want you to ask yourself, what will sugar freedom do for you? And when I talk about sugar freedom, I'm not talking about, oh my gosh, no fun food for the rest of your life. Um, no enjoying some of the things that you enjoy the most. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is the freedom to decide what you want to eat when you want to eat it instead of the cravings deciding for you. If you saw my email yesterday, I had a cravings moment that I just flat gave into. And you know what? Part of sugar freedom is saying, okay, that happened, whatever. Let's start over or let's just keep going from where I am right now and not sweat it. We are people, we're not perfect. I mean, perfection is, it just doesn't work. So we can talk about that in a second. But um, right now I wanna just keep on going with this. So really ask yourself, like, what would sugar freedom do for you? Would it mean that you would sleep better? Would it mean that you'd lose some of the belly fat, the visceral fat that's so dangerous for us? Would it mean that um, you make different choices and you're happy about those food choices? Like, what does it mean? Because it's so different for everybody. And I really, um, I really want you to think about that for just a second, okay? And we'll come back to this because this is a, this is a big question. Oh, I keep losing you. All right, just in case you don't know me, um, <laughs> this came off the website. I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you, but I am gonna paraphrase it really quick. I'm Kelly Howard. I like to say, just think of me as your personal guinea pig. I love to test things, try things, see, see what works, see what doesn't uh, long before, long before I talked to my clients about this. So this goes back numerous years ago. Let's call it, I don't know, maybe, or five years ago now, been a while. Um, a friend of mine said that she wanted to do this little course um, that she was putting out for her clients about sugar, uh, what is it, the um, Whole Food 30, but it was basically a little bit more than that. And she said, would you be my guinea pig? And I said, absolutely, I'll give that a try. So what we did was she was like, well, you know, this is no sugar, no wine, no, um, no refined carbs, no nut pretty much ended up being no nothing because by the end of it, she was like, well, you really shouldn't eat tofu either. And and I'm vegetarian, so I was like, okay, we, we got to be able to eat something or else I'm going to be really hungry. Um, but what happened was, and, and I'm somebody who I do put a little, I mean, not much, but I, I used to put a little sugar in my coffee in the morning and I have a glass of wine at the end of the day. And um, these were some of the things. And so when I told her I would do this for her, I didn't really think it through. I figured, 30 days. <laughs> I can do anything for 30 days and I can, but I didn't expect it to be as hard as it was. I mean, there was a lot of just plas, flat out willpower moments and willpower is not, um, it's a limited source. Okay. It, it's not something that you have all the time. And the only reason I made it through that was because I told her I was going to do it. And at the end I was like, okay, that was, you know, absolutely didn't work for me. I mean, at the end of the month, I had actually lost some weight. Uh, I was sleeping better, 
but it just wasn't, it wasn't easy. And I like easy. I like easy. I like fun. I like things to be simple. So I was like, okay, how can we make this simpler? And so what I started thinking about was that, you know, since willpower is not a resource that's there all the time, I wanted to come up with things that because I mean, I'll tell you this, I had clients asking me about this already, because I'd said I was going to do this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I had tools that I just hadn't applied. So then I started thinking about this and, and really actually getting my brain into this brain involved in this whole process. And what I did was I went, okay, like, let's test this again. And I tested it for 30 days and I tested it for 60 days. And and as I did it, I started using all the things that we normally use in my fitness freedom experience to um, to stick to exercise, to stick to sugar freedom. And it just became easier and easier and easier. Um, and then something happened. I think I was into like a 90 day, no sugar, no wine, no nada, just, you know, a testing period. Lockdown happened just as, you know, the pandemic started stress started, you know, it was a pretty stressful time. And I just was like, whatever. And I just threw it to the wind. I did. I threw it to the wind. Um, I started drinking wine pretty much every night again, eating pasta pretty much every night. Um, and probably not every night, but you know, more frequently than I needed to. And I put on weight. Like I started noticing that, you know, that belly fat, the visceral stuff came back. So that's when I was like, okay, stop. Let's remember that this is a lifestyle and it's choices. It's just choices. So we're going to learn about choices today. All right. Enough about me. All right. So number one, what sugar are we talking about? Okay. We're talking about added sugars. We're talking about excessive natural sugar. Like sometimes people say, well, I only eat fruit, but when you start adding up how much fruit you're knocking back every day, it's pretty impressive. Um, we're talking about refined carbs because the saying goes that from the neck down, your body doesn't know the difference between added sugar or sweet treats and refined carbs. I didn't know that years ago. Like I've been a vegetarian for a long time, way long, 40 years. And, um, and pasta has always been my go-to, which was fine. Like my body handled it just fine until probably about 50. <laughs> then it started handling it not so just fine. So think about like from the head down, neck down, your body reacts to refined carbs, sugars, all of them the same. And I'm talking about alcohol. Alcohol is a little different, but it plays the same role here. So, sorry, I keep losing you. So, all right. What are the, what do these sugars do to you? Okay. So a couple of things happen. And before, before I jump into this one, let me just explain. And this is something I did not, did not want to buy into at all, but I am noticing that it's probably more true than I believe. As we add a little age to ourselves, um, especially after call it 50, 50, 50 is like 50, like it's like the dirty word where everybody, everything changes, but it's, it's somewhere around there. We start needing less calories. We really do. I mean, I am somebody who my entire life I've eaten like, <laughs> I've eaten like a pig, but should I say that? Yeah. I've eaten like a pig. It's true. I've also exercised like a crazy woman. So back in the day, I could offset that food and all the types of food I ate with all the exercise I did and I was fine. But then our bodies shift a little bit and we start needing less calories, but we don't really think about that. So one thing that happens is that we don't cut back on some of those calories. Then the next thing that happens is that the sugar, especially when we're stressed, becomes more of an opportunity for us to have. Like it's, it's something that we start craving more and more. Sugar puts on belly fat, which is really the visceral fat. Visceral fat is, it's the bad fat that gets around your organs, hangs out there, and is difficult to get rid of. I will say that. Like, and I don't like to say anything's hard, but <laughs> it's harder than a lot of other things we do. Um, but you can get rid of it, okay? It will go away. And it does involve changing the way you eat. 
Um, and it doesn't have to be all the time. You will hear me say this all the time. You don't have to change a thousand percent. You just have to be willing to be 80 percent. 90 percent is better, but 80 percent, you're on your road. Um, brain fog. Everybody knows it happens. Inflammation. Okay. Inflammation is the precursor to, you know, all the bad stuff. Um, aging. Uh, if you if you ask any person who is out there, doctors who are out there in the longevity field, that, and you say, what is the number one cause of aging? They will say sugar. Um, cravings. I mean, sugar gives us cravings that we don't want to deal with. And then just cellular, issue, cellular issues. I'm going to call it health issues. All the stuff that comes that we know happens and the stuff that we don't know happens that comes from it. All right. So I'm going to, this, this, you know what? I built these slides. I didn't have Onika, who is like the person who makes these slides look beautiful. I built them. So just please forgive them. I just want to just run through some quick things and not just talk on the face all the time. So the bad cascading effect of sugar. So the way I look at everything we do, pretty much everything we do in life, you either have a cascading effect of good or a cascading effect of bad. And what I mean by that is when you have one thing like stress, when you have a lot of stress, stress leads to our cravings for sugar, alcohol, refined carbs. It's, it's our natural, um, it's our natural byproduct of stress. Just watch yourself next time you get stressed. You'll see one of the first things that happen is you start having those kind of cravings, um, which leads to belly fat and health issues. Sugar, refined carbs, and alcohol lead to poor sleep, <laughs> which leads to belly fat and more stress, right? When you're not sleeping well, your, your body becomes stressed. When you're stressed, you crave more. Like, think about it. Think about that one time recently that or sometime recently when you had a really bad night's sleep. The next day, you don't have that desire to just like chow down on dandelion greens. Probably no one has that desire, really. Um, you don't have that desire to chow down on things that are super healthy, like a bowl of oatmeal. You have the desire to eat something that is, you know, maybe biscuits or, um, I don't know, the things that pancakes, the things that have that refined carbs that makes us feel health happier. Um, all of these things lead to inflammation, which leads to health issues and aging. And worry about aging, weight gain, belly fat, poor sleep leads to craving for sugar. Like it's just this cascading effect of bad. Okay, I am, I'm going to see if I'm smart enough to stop share for just a second and see if anyone has questions. Okay, give me one sec. All right, so let me see if anyone has questions over here in the comments and I have this awesome thing that has popped up so I can't really see. So forget it. We're gonna jump back on the screen share and I'm gonna keep on going, okay? Give me one second. All right, so let's go to number four. So we talk, talked about the bad. This is the cascading effect of good. Okay, the cascading effect of actually lowering your sugar intake. So the lower your sugar, your alcohol, your refined carb consumption, the easier it is to lose belly fat. Belly fat just goes away. People will say this again and again, and I've got some um, people I wanna share with you at the end. Um, the lower your sugar take, intake, all types, the better you will sleep. 100%, I see it in Every one of my clients that I work with, everyone notices that when they start consuming less of these things, their sleep, whether it's sleep score, or whether they're using something like an Aura Ring or a Fitbit or whatever, or just how do they feel in the morning, it increases. The better you sleep, the lower your stress and the lower your cravings. The lower your sugar and stress, the better you sleep. Weight loss is easier and it leads to a desire to exercise and move more, okay? Plus, I mean, this is an aside from this, when we sleep well, it is one of those healthy um, habits that actually helps with weight loss, stress, stressing less, 
and um, just like a better lifestyle. So it, it's all connected. It's all connected. And then in the end, aging is reversed. So um, now I want to ask you, what will sugar freedom do for you? So just asking yourself, like, what are some of those things that you want? Because, and the reason this question matters so very, very much is that if we only have the desire, let's say we only have the desire to lose weight. Okay. So, so sugar freedom means that, um, if you stop eating sugar for a month, and we'll, we'll get down to the somatics of what sugar is and isn't and how much and all of that good stuff, okay? But let's say that you stop eating it for a month and you lose weight, okay? I don't know, pound a week. Pound a week's actually a really healthy thing to do. Um, does that matter that much to you? Or is there something deeper that means more? Someone said yesterday on the call that we were, we had a group call and someone said, she was like, yes, you know what? I have lost some weight, but the crazy thing is, is that I don't even get on the scale anymore because I just feel so good. Yes, I fit into the, my jeans now, but it's no longer my driver. What my driver is, is the fact that I feel great. I'm sleeping better. I'm exercising more. I'm sticking to my exercise plan. I'm doing all those things that matter and I'm planning my meals. Not like, and she's not like, you know, a crazy meal planner. She is somebody who says, you know, these are some of the, this is, you know, this is what this week looks like. Not like I'm going to count every ounce because that's not what she wants to do. But I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to eat. I'm feeling great. I'm waking up with energy in the morning. And it's led to, her words, it's led to me having more things to look forward to. I feel like this is the best self-care I've ever given myself. That's huge. That's really huge. I mean, and that's what I want for everybody. I want everybody to, to have that moment where they say, what will sugar freedom really do for you? or for me individually. I mean, I know for myself, some of the things, okay? If you look way long-term for me, way long-term, I'm aware that by watching what I eat, okay, within means, um, I'm, I'm not a crazy person. I mean, I went out the other night with friends. I had a couple of beers. I had a piece of pizza. I'm not going to say, oh my gosh, never again. And I'm also going to say, well, that was good. That was fun. I would like to, 80% of the time at least, be more consistent with the right things going into my body so that, so that, this is the long term here, so that I can do all the things I want to do for as long as I can want, as long as I can do them right? Like that to me is one of the things that we need to be looking at is what's the future? Okay. What's the future look like for you? And what will this do for your future self? Okay. So ask yourself, what difference will that make? And what does sugar freedom do for you? All right. A couple of, these are clients. <laughs> this is my super ugly slide. <laughs> so if Aniko happens to be watching, sorry, Aniko. <laughs> I just did this myself. Um, so one of my clients literally said, this changed my life End of story. Um, I'm not going to tell her story here because if I tell it, some of the clients will understand it and, and know who said this. And I prefer privacy for the people who have said, use my name. I'm going to tell you a couple of them. Um, so one of them was Jamie. Jamie said, I'm finishing the 30 day reset with Kelly. I put on a pair of shorts today for the first time in over a month and I didn't have to squeeze into them. And she, I, I can just say off here, she's sleeping better. She has more energy and her digestion is better. Digestion is a big thing. It's, it's one of those things that actually is affected by a lot of people's digestion is affected by too much sugar. Um, another client said, I fit into pants I haven't worn in three years. 
Another client is like, I'm almost at the end of my first 30 days. Uh, she recommends it highly and she, <laughs> she's a serious recovering chocoholic. And I can tell you that is so true. Um, and then one last person, and I'm not going to use her name either, but she basically said that every night her lifestyle is that she and her husband weren't just sharing a glass of wine or a glass of wine. They're sharing a bottle of wine every night and sometimes more. And she was waking up in the middle of the night, not feeling good, like not feeling good mentally or physically. Um, and then adding to that, not only were they doing that, they were also having ice cream at the end of the day, cookies during the day, cakes during the day, like all the stuff. And she ended up, I mean, not that this is all about weight, but I will say that she decided that this was going to be a lifestyle change for her. So she still has typically on an evening, she'll have a glass of wine. She eats almost no cookies now. Um, she's, she's kind of similar to me. Like she'll have, she has a little bit more sugar in her coffee than I do. And I don't have like right now, I'm not having sugar in my coffee, but then what happens? This is, this is what happens. And it's why we make this a lifetime process is that, you know, I won't have sugar in my coffee for, oh, a long time two months, three months, four months. And then one day I'd put a little in. And then six months later, I'm noticing I'm putting, a, for me, it's a quarter of a teaspoon, but it's still added sugar. So, and I'm not trying to make that sound like um, a quarter of a teaspoon is much. It's just a habit that we slip into. And then we go back through this and we slip out of it. But for her, she went through all this big change and she is now exercising, which she never did before. And when I say exercising, I mean, she does, she does a stationary bike, which I never thought she would do. She lifts some weights uh, three times a week. She does yoga five times a week. She lost like three dress sizes and she's, she's perky. Um, she was never a super perky person. She's perky now. So it makes a difference. Okay. Um, so why is stopping sugar so difficult? And I will just say this, it is because it is something that we have consumed from the day we were born. Our brains love it, right? Like it makes our brains so happy when we're stressed. That is what like, that's, that's it. One of those things that we've talked about, refined carbs, um, sugary snacks, alcohol. Those are all the things that we turn to when we're triggered because it just makes us feel good. And it may not make us feel good afterwards, but in the moment, all of the happy chemicals in our brain are lit up and just enjoying what's going on. That's one of the reasons it's so difficult. Another one of the reasons it's so difficult is it's so prevalent, so prevalent. Like if you just, in the next three days while we're doing this course, if you just go through and you start looking at where you run into sugar. We'll talk, we will talk tomorrow about hidden sugar because it's in all foods. I mean, once again, it is put into foods because it makes us want those foods. Okay. Bottom line, that's, that's simple. <laughs> the food industry is a, a, what, a gazillion dollar industry and they know what to do. So it's put in those foods because we crave it and it lights up all the receptors in our brain. But more than that, it is it is everyone bringing desserts to a party. It's everyone going out to happy hour. It's, you know, it's, it's just in our culture and probably in our humanity. So learning to work with it and without it, it's just, it's a process. That's all it is. It's just a learning process. So that's why it's difficult though. And so what's next? So what we're going to be talking about over the next couple of days is why starting is easy because it is like, it's like that first 30 days I did, I was like, Oh sure. I can do that. First few days I was fine. And then, <laughs> then reality hit. Um, but why staying on course is hard and there are ways to change it. Okay. Because I said it before and I will say it again and again and again, I like things that are easy, fun, simple. Okay. Why you need a runway. And I'll talk about a runway tomorrow, but you need a runway. If you don't have one, you will crash and burn by week one. It just is what happens. Willpower. Yes or no. Do you use it or not? Okay. Um, hidden sugar. We need to talk about that because it's 
everywhere. And once you start getting your eyes opened, especially within the group, like what we do in the group, um, we'll do it. We'll do a whole sugar freedom next month. And what we do in there is everybody starts recognizing what's going on and like all the sugar and all the different things. Like somebody said, I remember this very clearly because it never occurred to me. She had this bread that she loved and she came into the group one day and she's like, oh my gosh, not only is it like white flour, it's, I don't remember, I'm gonna make something up. They add 18 grams of added sugar to it. No wonder I like it, right? But if you're not looking for it, I mean, that's not, that wasn't even hidden, that was just blatant, um, but there are hidden sugars everywhere. Um, how to use soothers. Soothers are a big help. How to use visual aids, because we all learn differently. And a lot of us are visual. We'll learn visual aids, we'll learn uh, kinesthetic aids, we'll learn auditory aids, okay? Um, replacements versus substitutions and when to use them. Dealing with triggers, okay? Because triggers are one of those things that's going to get you from I'm doing okay to, oh my God, you know, give me the, give me the sugar or for my case yesterday give me the ice cream bar um and what you need in your sugar freedom toolbox okay you need a cornucopia of stuff to draw from all right so i'm going to jump out of here and i'm going to see if anyone has questions all right hang on just a second and let me see if I can find you guys on Facebook. All right, um, I don't see any questions right this minute, but I will say that I'm also in a situation. Oh, hey, Tammy, I see that you're here. Thanks for joining us. And Stephanie, thank you for joining us. Um, I appreciate it. I know a lot of people can't um, join us during the day for these. And I totally understand it. All replays will be available. We will be sending out a replay page to you also, because for me, I need to do these during the day because I, A, do um, client calls some evenings, and B, I, I quit working at night a few years ago. <laughs> I used to work at night all the time. I was like, I think I'm so done with that. So I do them during the day, but I make sure that the replays and the replay page is available to you. So if anyone has a question, Drop it in right now. Otherwise, I'm going to be back tomorrow at 1130. We'll have reminders. You can bring your questions um, in and let me know, even, even drop them in here. And I, if you're listening to it, oh, do me a favor. If you're listening to it afterwards, do a hashtag replay so I know that you're seeing it afterwards. I really appreciate that. So I am going to jump off. I took up 30 minutes of your time. I appreciate you so so much for being here and please let me know um, anything you need and i will see you tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to go over all those things that i talked about at the very end see you later bye bye now